Hello! So today we are going to take a look at reimagining the American Gothic. Um, this is an exploration of the art of parody. So the art of parody, what even is that? A parody in art is also called a spoof, a send-up, or a lamp-on. In current use, it's imitative work, which is created to either mock, comment on, or trivialize an original work of art, the subject, the author, the style, or some other target by means of satiric or ironic imitation. Essentially, it's taking an original work of art like this one, which is called The Great Wave off of Kanagawa by Hokusai, and then changing it and altering it. So here they've made it look like cookie monster by adding the cookies and the googly eyes. Um, well, the painting we're going to take a look at though is called the American Gothic. It was created in 1930 by artist Grant Wood. It features a farmer, his daughter, and their farmhouse. Um, you can see that the farmer is holding a pitchfork and your challenge is how can you reinvent, reimagine this to make it more relevant, more meaningful to you and the world today. Um, so what can we do to take this to 2020? Here are some parodies that have already been created of this work of art. Here's one that was done where they made them into Legos. Here's a SpongeBob edition. We've got the Minions. We've got um, the clock and the teapot from Beauty and the Beast. Here we've got him in like a football jersey with a Starbucks coffee. She's got Beats headphones and a uh, jacket and it's in front of a more modern house. So you can see some ideas of how this has been done in the past. Your first task is gonna go to Seesaw. Once you are in Seesaw, you are gonna find your class. For instance, I am in Miss Witter's class at Grant right now. You'll go to your activities and you will see an art activity. You are gonna find this activity which says, Art with Miss Anderson and has some dates. Remember that last date, this one right here, is when your project is due. So if you're one of my fourth grade artists, your project is due by the 23rd. If you are one of my fifth grade artists, it's due by the 24th. You need to read all these instructions you are right now watching the instructional video and your first step is you're actually going to have to add a response to be able to access the file that is the template. I do not want you to go to the file. I want you to take a screenshot of the file. So I'm going to hit my magic button to take a screenshot. If you don't have one of these, you can hold down your power button and your home button, please tap on the screenshot. You're going to want to crop it down so that you just have the template for the American Gothic. Then you're going to hit done. You're going to hit save to photos. From there, I recommend that you put this into Keynote. You are certainly welcome to put it into Sketches School as well. So you're going to go and you're going to open up, I recommend, a white presentation, a new one and then you are gonna be hitting the plus. You're gonna find this one on the end that has the picture icon, and you are first starting by hitting photo or video. You're gonna to go to your recents, you're gonna find that screenshot. I recommend making it really big so that it fills your screen. From here, you need to decide what theme you're gonna be using for your reimagining. Remember, in a parody, the artist is taking a work of art and they're changing things to either make it funny or maybe make a statement about something that they care about. Um, so for me, I think that it would be kind of funny to make these people into maybe they are artists. So instead of being farmers, they're artists. Uh, once I have my theme decided, I can do a couple of things. One thing that I can do is I can hit the paintbrush, a cool tool that is here. Actually, first I need to select my image. So with the image selected, I can hit the paintbrush. One of the cool tools that's here is called Instant Alpha. 
So if you're using some found images in your artwork, for instance, if I was to go find a picture of a paintbrush or an art smock, I can use Instant Alpha if I click on that. And then as I drag over it, the colors that I'm dragging over are gonna get removed from my image. So this image is got a lot of contrast, which makes Instant Alpha easier to use because it's mostly just a gray drawing with a white background. So as I drag over things, I'm picking the area that would be removed. If I lift off, you can see that it got a lot lighter. Those things are removed or made transparent. I'm gonna hit reset because I don't actually wanna do that. But that is a cool tool for you to use if you're deciding to pull in found images. For instance, if you wanted to pull in some found images of clothing, maybe you wanna pull in some celebrity faces, other things like that, that is a cool tool to be able to use. Alrighty. I am gonna hit add and then I'm gonna go find our old friend drawing down at the bottom. I like to zoom in by pinching with two fingers to get as big as I can get. I am gonna start with the farmer part of my equation here. I'm gonna switch my pen tool to black and then I could just start drawing the farmer's face. Big tip for you as you are trying to move a little bit more quickly, yes we do like to take our time, but so that this project doesn't take forever in a day, my big tip to you is make sure that you're closing your shapes so that when you want to go in and color, you can just tap in those areas with that paint tool to fill them automatically. Remember to move, you have to use two fingers. If you are finding that your picture is as big as it can be, you can't zoom in anymore, and you want to zoom in more than you're being allowed to, one great tip for you is to hit the done, make your picture larger, and then go back in and do some work. All right, I'm gonna do a nose here, and I think I wanna make this guy a little bit like Salvador Dali, who is a famous, Spanish surrealist artist who's known for his fabulous mustache, which actually looks kind of, and it kind of shifts sizes, kind of like that. He's got this fabulous mustache that sweeps out to the sides. I think I'm going to make him a little bit like Salvador Dali. And remember, your lasso tool allows you to select marks kind of move them over if they're not quite where you want them to be. And I would just keep going, keep going to add details to really complete this scene. Maybe I do kind of a wide expression for my artist here. Um, so remember your expectation is that you are giving me some figure to be the farmer. <coughs> You're giving me some figure that represents the daughter and there's something in the farmer's hand. In this case, maybe because I'm making them into artists, it would be a paintbrush. There'd be some sort of building in the background. You can choose to draw, or like I said a little bit earlier, use found images. And you'll just keep going when you're done. Remember, you need to hit done to save your work. My expectation is that we're moving a little bit closer to this. Now, I will say that to do this example here, it took me a lot of time to complete this Harry Potter parody of the American Gothic. Um, so I'm not expecting you to take as much time as I took on this, but I would like to see something that's at least approaching this level of finish. So you can see I used a found image in the background. I used the paint tool to tap in areas to fill in. I worked with the line tool too, as I drew and described these figures. Once you get your artwork to some stage like this, that's when you would take a screenshot of your completed artwork. If you have the magic button, again, you're just going to tap on it and then take your screenshot. Please make sure that you're going in to crop so that it is just your finished work of art because I don't really need to see what Keynote looks like. I know what it looks like. I'd like to see what your finished work of art looks like. When you're done, you're gonna hit done and you'll hit save to photos. I can't wait to see your creative versions of this famous painting.